Lucy and Pat are now Mr. and Mrs. Patrick John Nugent. The president formally surrendered his daughter to her new husband less than an hour ago at the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. And the marriage ceremony itself ended at 12.42 Eastern Daylight Time. Since then, the newly married couple have been participating in the line of dual mass. It has been a colorful, splendid, even magnificent occasion. Although in today's midday temperature, some of the formally dressed members of the wedding party may be glad it's over. Still, it's an occasion no one will forget. Toasted, dances to be danced, and cake to be either eaten or slept on. Now that choice will depend on the degree of your hunger and or sentimentality. But the day that we're calling Lucy's Day is far from over. We had a, a couple of tips about what had happened during the ceremony. Liz Carpenter, Mrs. Johnson's secretary, ran downstairs and said that when Lucy and her father walked down the aisle and he surrendered her to Pat, she turned around uh, to her father and gave him a little pat, as though she was saying goodbye to him. And then, when You mean not a little pat, but a little pat on the cheek. <laughs> <laughs> You're paying attention, and I'm proud of you. <laughs> when they were uh, standing for the ceremony, or just before the ceremony, uh, Lucy was, was so nervous that she was visibly shaking, and she had held her little fine chin out, though, and she was looking up at the magnificent mosaic of Christ. Uh, Pat was so moved that uh, he took out a handkerchief and wiped away some real tears during the ceremony. And then also, Bob, very like the two of them, I think, when it came time for their response, Pat could hardly be heard. His, his voice, in fact, couldn't be heard. He could see his lips move. But Lucy's voice came through loud and clear. Isn't that usually the way, as I recall, most of the weddings I've attended, the, uh, the woman somehow manages to get the words out beautifully, and the man seems to be somewhat... Well, I don't want to say reluctant, but it's quiet about the whole thing. It's just what we've been saying all along. <laughs> Lucy Day. <laughs> Betty, during the near frantic activities of the past week, Lucy and Pat did manage to squeeze in time for an interview. Let's listen to it. Lucy, I think you said at one time or another that this was not love at first sight. Uh, could you tell us what did happen on that first sight or first I don't mean that in a derogatory way. But uh, the situation was so difficult, I can't imagine it. Uh, K.Y. Yes, we give him a crack. Over uh, the air. Uh, Ostrich, Hill, Pugh, and Steve Reeves. Uh, you never made it with Steve Reeves. Well, he sure wishes he could. Yeah. It was a very, well, I really think he's busy weekend, very hurried weekend, and so uh, we either got along, and some other people, and he's very fond of the chairs, and we got along very easily, and uh, I think it's how it all started. Well, he's the reason uh, very fond of the chairs. It wasn't really first sight, because Lucy had been on a date that night. Uh, <laughs> 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 Lucy, I think you said that one time or another that this was not love at first sight. Could you tell us what did happen on that first sight? Has that been a problem for you? Well, for instance, the traditional asking for a girl's hand, how does that go when you have to ask the president? Well, then be cool. The same as it were for any other girl. It's, uh, it wasn't difficult. I was nervous. I told you I weren't nervous. I'd be lying. Is it? <laughs> no, but it went very well. Everything worked out just fine. We well, were going down to Texas, and uh, there were many reports that we'd gone down there specifically to ask him to talk to him about it. And um, we uh, had no intention of doing so. And uh, if we had, it would have been a difficult way to do it, I mean, because uh, when the whole world was doing it, we were going to do it, and we could have done 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 it
and also she handles herself very well with reporters. She's a bit like her father in that respect. She'll answer all the questions. She likes to write about it, but you don't usually learn a thing that she didn't mean to tell you to start with. Lucy has used the uh, press release technique. That is, uh, for example, when she wanted her father to know that she and Pat had decided to get engaged, but she didn't quite have the courage to tell her himself, like she leaked it to some of her friends in the press corps, and it worked rather well. Yesterday at the rehearsal, Lucy did another thing, like her father. When she arrived somewhat late, the crowd of several hundred people immediately broke into a pause, and then Lucy quickly led Pat through the little barricades and over to the crowd to shake hands and chat. Afterward, Mr. Reggie Johnson himself arrived also a little late. He did exactly the same, and then he stopped briefly and we talked. Mr. President, uh, do you feel about tomorrow that you're losing a daughter or gaining a son? Well, I'm very happy about tomorrow. Uh, we've always wanted a boy, and uh, we think we're getting the kind of boy that we would like. And of course, we're going to miss Lucy. She's bouncy and lively and keeps us all happy. But, uh, we, uh, Marriage. There hardly is a wild world. You know, one member of today's wedding party, 
since the day 30 years ago when he went into the john with a weird ravaging illness the john is located in an immense motel which stands on the island just off harry sam only the elite has been inside the john where the important functions of harry sam are performed there's a constant stream of limousines going to and fro from the motel disembarking judges generals the chiefs of crabs and the nazarene bishops the nazarene bishops are a bunch of drop dead egalitarians Crying into the billfolds, we must love one another or die. These luminaries are followed by swarthy, swaggering attendants in high black boots, hoods, with slits for eyes, carrying towels, sweet-smelling colognes, lotions, and fancy enema bottles as they waddle up the unfractuous path like penguins in their evening clothes. The three letters eat, blink their rays throughout Harry Sam across the bay. Helicopters spin above the motel like agitated bugs. Two giant valves protrude from the island, flushing filth and refuse into the bay, which separates it from Harry Sam. The bay is so filled with human hair, poisons, muck, and bilge that no swimmer has ever emerged from its waters alive. What do you think about this grand place? Grand? Are you for real? You call this far out grand? Why, the only issue is whether those cats up there in the water closet will get off their big fat rumps and come out. Land, country, man, those cats have been up there in that foul, nasty place for 30 years, dripping feces all over the place, and you got the nerve to talk about land, country, are you off the wall? Why, any cat in his right mind knows that this is a big way out bring down, I said, my voice rising. There are things going on in Harry Sam that will give you the willies. Bat fly into his stomach walls and shit in his brains. There's a horrible screaming inside as funny looking monsters tramp through testicles searching for food. Enchanted areas where the undead travel around on motorized golf carts and play gazoos and dog bones and where unemployed presidents are giving the people a whole lot of you are my sunshine. Well, I can go on for days. Why, just the other day I saw a man running out of a bar yelling, just like Munich, just like Munich. What the fuck does Munich have to do with anything? <laughs> Harry Sam, my leader. Oh, what I gonna do? I'm so overwhelmed. Call me Sam, kid. This is formalities. You're just as good as me or even better. You know, Chris, he said, just because I've been up here evacuating for 30 years from this really way out bring down illness doesn't mean that I don't know what's going down in me. Why, I look through my binoculars and see everything flying over there and nothing, which is me. Nothing escapes my eyes. I like the way you operate. Here, have one of them pauses what refreshes. Ha, 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 he said, jamming the bottle's neck into my mouth. Now, there's a lot of clamoring and beefing going on down there. Some of those dropouts are gripping about me not coming out of the john to hold them in my lap. A man in my position can't be exposing himself in public. I'm not nice to be near. One time, we developed a thing what would put down all them smart little spicks. Yeah, this foundation came up with some weapon. What would crush them spicks and had them spicks running around giggling and hopping around? Ha, you should have seen them running with their clothes on fire, said Harry Sam, slapping his knees. What was that weapon called, Rapunzel, asked Sam of the little man. I think we called it a beneficent incapacitator. <laughs> See, they laugh at me because on the newsreels, my shorts don't fit too good. We think they fit fine, boss. You look like Rock Hudson, of course, said. No, you're wrong, Sam said. Gravity has gotten the best of me. I'm both flabby and sick and not pleasant to be near. Senior prom, and uh, it was pretty unbelievable. Sir, briefly, uh, how did you come across this 65 year old? She doesn't lie, so I believed her, and uh, it wasn't a joke after all. Gutter in Tehran, <laughs> looking for my Trojans. <laughs> Betty is probably a pretty big day at that marine outfit in Vietnam, and we hope it's a peaceful one. It's certainly a big day here in Washington. But this is also quite a day for walking in Illinois. That's one hundred lira. Or is it? As the story. 
this community see, alongside Lake Michigan that is home for the, the groom is trying to take things in stride and generally succeeding. So we went into an you hear the usual tavern talk and she starts bark, eating me. told me. It's yeah, a continuing to God, topic teeth that cold. Cold. gets real. <laughs> <laughs> It's like she had metal teeth or something, air conditioned we're proud, teeth. I don't know. But we're not stringing bands no spit at all. And so she's scarfing away, and around the corner comes this big hefty, looked like a Persian keystone cop. Very wise. So she babbled with the creeps for a while. I paid a dollar. They left. I suspect it was her brother in law. So he left him. So we crossed the street and went into an even deeper, darker alley. And uh, she starts scarfing me again. <laughs> Cold teeth. So I patted her on the ass and she whirls around and pulls up about 97 grimy petticoats. He grabs a hold of me and wang. And I don't know which hole I went into. Somewhere in the process of that, she caught my wallet. It feel well, good? Yeah, not so far away place. Can you briefly Delta describe what, what happened there when you felt like home, a, yeah, felt like one of those, one of those biscuit tubes. Let me a Ballard oven rig? Yeah, a Ballard oven rig, like full of liquor. It's pretty nice. Did she come? Yeah, yeah. I don't think she did. Did she have a dusty climax? Since then, they've been participating in this nuptial climax. Did she have a dusty climax? No, she just man. turned around and wiped my dick off with her pay to The proper term? Split. Can you and briefly describe her face if you catch her? No, she didn't want to see it. So the wedding party is still inside. I think the bottom of her face was eating away by syphilis. The wedding party is coming out. We're going to be switching over there to John Meyer, who's outside the shrine of the Immaculate so Conception. Meantime, Betty, maybe you could tell us a little about the new gym. She lifted it up. Well, you know, we don't know much about the Nugent family, and there was a kind of thought that maybe the Nugent family was hiding from the press. as she breathes. Did you grab her buns? <laughs> no, I, I, well, I patted her on the bun once to see if She was kind of bony. It might have been a boy. I don't know. <laughs> had a dress on. How about tits? Any tits? Uh, well, maybe not that I could see. Yeah. They, they How old what you have on? Just a bunch of, it's like tablecloths. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a doily or something across her face. Or a thing around. I couldn't see anything but her eyes. She had underwear on, of course. Well, I don't know, I don't know. She had all those petticoats on. Did you suck her slip? No. Why not? I would have puked. I would have wasted all my booze. Uh, you were telling me once about it here. A toe fetish scene you had in Cairo, which you briefly Make described. Seem so real. They say, well, oh, yeah, know, when I was about nine again. years old, I was Ranch, we're not a that gypsy kind of boy people. in Egypt. Uh, we like them very much. During the night, I was stolen away by rich people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, they're, they're just they took me to their castle. Nice people like most people around this I had all the refinements and Betty, uh, I sex slaves and everything. It was very groovy. And I was walking around from the church. one time during some kind of civil war. And a tank and ran over my toe. The portal, it, this it was incredible. It looked like a beaver tail. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> with tank treads imprinted in it. In the Cafe Society, I was very, very popular among the, uh, the elite uh, toe queens of Cairo at that time. I was healed up and just was still. Yeah, just stayed flat. It was incredible. Fan myself with it. <laughs> I could water ski on one toe. So I used to get paid tank. thousands and thousands of shackles and people just uh, they'd like flip my pancakes with your toe. Will you? <laughs> you know, weird things like that. You didn't have to touch a toe any uh, tuckuses. Well, I did slice up a few old uh, cabinet members. Uh, I insisted on it. They take the ovation of the crowd, right smile in and return. Well, what, what about that mummy? Wanted me to uh, out now, wanted me to get wrapped up in them filthy rags dates, with him so we could get some arm off the of my ass. <laughs> 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 I stand still for a lot of things in my business, but that was a bit much. Well, what's, what's been in your experience uh, as a no goat herd? Reached the limousine. Smell my dick. <laughs> How do you find uh, sex with giraffes? Is that the, what are the, some of the, what are some of the mechanical problems about having sex with a giraffe? Well, you have to climb up their neck every time you want to kiss them. <laughs> 
Sure. Can at 69. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to. It's a way where you could slice about a seven foot honk out of the neck and then rejoin the head. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, they didn't cooperate with that shit too much. <laughs> well, how is that? How is that giraffe slit as compared to a groupie slit? Well, you don't have to climb a step ladder, fucking groupie. <laughs> On the whole, ha ha ha. The giraffe slit is a little bit uh, it's diamond shaped. It's got raspy teeth, so you have to do it quick. It clicks like a camera shutter. You have to really get a quick bastard. Well, you're from Texas, so originally one of your hallucinations is that we kill people. <laughs> Can you give us some inside gossip about the Johnson family? Oh, boy. They sick. And they've got this room. They used to have in their Austin, in their house. They had this room. It's egg-shaped. And they had the sound effects speakers that would go. Sunshine. <laughs> And it was uh, heated to body heat, and they'd all get in there and take off all their clothes and fill it about half full of a uh, mixture of Vaseline and chili pepper sauce, <laughs> and get in there. That's a popular dish in Texas. Slam a lot of it, and uh, they'd get in there. And Turn all the lights off. It was like a sense of deprivation. And they just get in there and, uh, and float around in sort of like sub vaselinic uh, orgies. Half of the Austin police force used to go in there. They filmed a couple of cycles on it. What are you? Well, they had the special camera that could uh, photograph under vaseline <laughs> through uh, chili sauce. And um, it was it was incredible. We'd all be floating around in this big daisy chain, mouths glued to genitals, and in a big circle, very slowly. And it's uh, it's like aqua kid. They have webbed feet. You know. Well, oh, they're, they're floating around in a. Uh, yeah, they just float around in each other. And the sperm would just sort of float around the mass. Like those paperweights with snowstorms. And opal chips through glycerin. Well, it's been a marvelous delight to uh, talk to you. From your vast experience here in the human sexual orbit, what has been your most disgusting thing you've ever seen? Oh, when I was about eight years old, I, uh, I was with the circus, and uh, there was this fat lady on there, and she was about eight feet tall, and uh, eight feet wide. Matter of fact, she didn't have any sides, <laughs> and uh, she had an enormous coat. It was about like a number two wash tub, and she used to ball the elephants. <laughs> After the show was over, the old farmers would be there to get the word, and they'd pay them you know, five bucks to see you. Uh, <laughs> the uh, elephant ball, uh, ball is that one. <laughs> so I was interested in photography. <laughs> Inter uterine photography. So uh, <laughs> I climbed in there one time with a scuba, scuba, a scuba outfit on and a camera with a light and everything. And I, and I actually photographed from the inside, a cunt's idea of being fucked by a bull elephant. So I puked, I thought, I, she thought, when I puked, she thought the elephant had come. Everybody got confused and she started scratching me. Uh, but, uh, that's about the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Do you, do you, have, do you, have, do you have any messages for the teenagers of America? Yes, uh, boys, what you do for Fallout is uh, reinsert and shorten stroke. <laughs> 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 <laughs>